Back when we were kids, we've been to the Mystic Lamb together in Ghent. I was really impressed by the painting. The last couple of years, uh, my, my interest in the Mystic Lamb has been growing and growing and I've been looking up so much about it. And, uh, and I went to take Stan on this trip because uh, the painting is painted by two brothers. If you have once started digging into the history and mystery of the Ghent altarpiece, you never find your way out. Imagine the miners, simple man, put this masterpiece in here, in these narrow tunnels, without knowing which treasure they were carrying. Fulda de Mystique, the mystic land that is here. Here is the Fulda. There is no interaction, there is no dramatics, there is, there is no, 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 and that conveys an atmosphere of eternity. When you dive into the mystic land, it, it pulls you in and, um, and it grabs you and it doesn't let you go anymore. Oh, that's glad! <laughs> <laughs> one big puzzle, but you can keep on playing that puzzle and uh, you can uh, keep looking for answers and that's for me the, the interesting part. Uh. Oh, slapel, eh? Slapel. Oh. Hey, hey. Hallo, hallo. Hoe gaat ie? Ja, kom binnen. Oké, okay, wat vinden van mijn kleren? Die kleren, uh, ja, dat is wel opvallend. Dat is heel... Ideaal. Dus ik ga het uitleggen. Dus mijn kleren zijn de kleuren die ook in het lam God zitten. Ik heb zelfs een rode t-shirt aan. Toch briljant? Ja. Prima. Ja. Dat is goed. goed. Bedacht. Dank u. Voilà. Dan kunnen we vertrekken. When I first uh, heard that Jonas uh, wanted to do a, a trip in the footsteps of the, the, the mystic lamb, um, I thought he was joking. But then the question is, why not? Because what do we have to lose? It's... Uh... <laughs> Today we, we met with um, Professor Schmidt, who is an amazing storyteller. He really guided us through the whole story of the Mystic Land. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's the guy, the go-to guy, um, if you want to know anything about the Mystic Land. We call it now the St. Bevan's Cathedral, but uh, at the time of Van Eyck it was the parish church of St. John the Baptist, and they commissioned an altar and that was the mystic lamp of uh, Van Eyck. The work has been safe here in the cathedral until mid 16th century. And then you have two episodes where it was removed in order to protect it. The first time it was removed from the White Chapel was in August uh, 1566. And they uh, took the painting from the White Chapel and it was hidden in the actual bell tower. Now in 78, also uh, for fear of destruction, it was brought to the town hall. Why is it considered such a masterpiece? From the beginning here, when the work was created, when it was unveiled for uh, the people, they have sensed, felt that here was something was something absolutely extraordinary and still is extraordinary. It's only day one and we learn so much um, and it's an entire new world that is that is opening up just in front of us. The Mystic Lamp has been to France, to Austria, to Germany and that's the same as we are going and to we're, do. We're going to do the exact same route that the Mystic Lamp did and I think the Mystic Lamp also went to a Burger King. Kakstustuk. What's that? I'm going to my coffee. Oh! I'm going to sleep in this gele muts. 
kitayı getti ana baksana o zaman. The house tanken he? Hello? Its true adventures of the mystic lamp began during the time of the French Revolution. In 1794, the four central panels of the altarpiece were taken to Paris to the Louvre, where they remained until the defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo. In 16, the cathedral itself had decided to sell the wings to an antiquarian in Brussels, a certain Nieuwenhuis. And already in 17, that Nieuwenhuis resold for 20 times the price, the wings to an English antiquarian living in Germany, a certain Solly. And so the works went to Berlin. Can you tell me something about the historic context of the painting? It's, it's a seminal work. It's, it's crucial for the whole development. That is true. It's a very first big masterwork of all Flem Flemish painting. I mean, it's still shrouded in mystery, so to say, and it's still complicated, and so many people are caring about it, and so many people are restoring it at this moment, and so many people trying to solve the riddle around it. And of course, it's, if you start digging into that matter, it captures you, you know? It's, it's, uh, you never get out of it, in a way. You can do it here, because these four paintings uh, they are not Netherlandish, they are from the Middle Rhine region, but these were the test objects for splitting the Ghent altarpiece. Originally, there were just two panels, the former outsides and the former insides, and they were split in 1893 as a test for splitting the Ghent altarpiece wings. Okay. That was not so unusual in the 19th century, you know, you had uh, Paintings painted on two sides, that's really cumbersome for the gallery, so just split it. And in 1920, as a kind of compensation for all these, uh, the devastations caused by the German invasion during the First World War, the 12 paintings now of the Gent altarpiece were taken from Berlin to Brussels. Now, that was Berlin. At least the painting was again in the Veit Chapel. Until 40, when uh, the war started, of course, here in Ghent also, they said, how can we save the mystic land? And in 40, all the panels were brought to the Pyrenees in France. You had planned, Jonas, to go to France. What happened? Um. <laughs> We wanted to go to France, but uh, we lost the tapes, so <laughs> <laughs> in a terrible, terrible fire. I still have wounds on my hand, see? So France is beautiful. <laughs> yes, we saw France on, on pictures and the pictures were <laughs> beautiful. Hitler wanted to create a huge museum of Aryan art. And in 42, the Germans came to Po and took the mystic lamp and brought it to the castle of Neuschwanstein. It was there from 42 to 44. The painting was brought here to Neuschwanstein. That was because of the fact, like it says here, um, that it's a great hideout spot because it's a castle. It's totally isolated and there is only one road to the castle. Hallo. Maar het is, het is ook volgens mij gewoon het, het uh, mooiste kasteel ter wereld. Doe maar, het is echt prachtig. Op dat topje het is echt... van in Berg. En je hoort echt zo de tune van Disney, hè? zo... Staat dat er niet mee op, of niet? Ja, daar. Yes? Volgende. Two brothers. One mission. The Lamb of God. No, it's the Mystic Lamb. <laughs> the Mystic Lamb, starring Jonas Stewart. Um, hello, I get up soup that lamp. <laughs> oh, and now you're going to go away. It's a bit of Oostenrijk, actually.
But in the meantime, uh, a director of the Viennese Museum, uh, he had paid a visit to a salt mine in Alt aus See, and he had seen there that the conditions for conserving and for storing works of art were absolutely perfect. This is limestone, yeah. so the water can dribble through it. Yeah. But inside, where the salt is, the air is very dry, or not very dry, at about 75% uh, of humidity. Okay. And the salt and this air, it's a perfect condition to store art. So yeah. that was one of the reasons Aldasee was chosen to store I, I, this uh, treasure. Yeah. yeah. And these railways, this is the exact route the Nazis took the mystic land. Okay. So it is said there were over 6,500 paintings in here together with gold coin collections, weapon collections, so really treasures from all over Europe, and they were brought to this exact place. Okay. And then at the end of the war, there was a plan to, to blow up the, the mine. Yeah, in the beginning of April 1945, the Nazis brought in here eight big bombs, and they wanted to blast the whole mine together with all the masterpieces because they knew that they would lose the war and they didn't want anybody else to have it. But the salt mine workers, they learned about this plan and they sneaked the bombs out beginning of May and just blasted the entrances so that nobody could come in here. And four days later, the Americans together with the monuments men arrived and saved this place. What is the, the most expensive painting that was stored here? Nowadays we, we think it's the mystic lamp, yeah? so yeah. yeah, but it's priceless, you know, you, you cannot buy yeah. it. One of the biggest mysteries of the mystic lamp is the fact that the, 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 the painting still exists. The things the, the, the mystic lamp experienced, it's, it's almost incountable. It was saw in, uh, in half. In yeah. Berlin, yeah. it just got away from a fire in St. Bavos Cathedral. A really huge fire. Yeah. Some lead dripped on the painting. It was saved from a really big explosion in the salt mines of Althausee. But then in 34, you have had the theft of the panel of the just judges, the famous theft, which is the great unsolved Agatha Christie of Ghent. Because of the fact that the stolen panel was split in Berlin, the thieves could give one painting back to the government. They left this painting in a locker in the train station of Brussels for the police to find, to prove that they still had the other painting, the just judges. What have you done? Good God, this is a This great mystery. How can this? I think Jonas um, passed his love for the, the, the mystic lamp uh, onto me, which I am uh, uh, really, really, really thankful for. Say <laughs> Stijn, yeah. you have a trui, that sits there in a pollock out. Say Jonas, your face, that sits there in a Picasso out. Hey, glad, hey, cow, <laughs> grip zoeken, yeah. Come on! Yeah. If you take a look at my brother, you see what happens in less than one week with colors. Imagine what 600 years can do. Voilà. Jij hebt dezelfde kleren aan. Ja, maar gerestaureerd, hè. <laughs> Hoe heb jij dat gedaan? Het lam gods, dat is één groot mysterie, Jonas. Kom je nog zien? Ja. <laughs> Kom. Now you can admire the Ghent altarpiece in its divine colors, as the brothers Van Eyck painted it originally. One last question. Do you know where the hidden panel is? Yes, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, not, I not tell you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs>